Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. We're back again with you guys for another show, for another episode of our tactical breakdown series in which we look at the players that Arsenal could, should, maybe will, but fingers crossed we will see them sign for Arsenal very, very soon. And today's episode uh, is on a player that, I mean, with the rumours, are you to believe them, is the closest we've seen to someone signing because supposedly his agent is in London right now to have discussions with Arsenal about a possible deal that's what the rumours are. That's what the reports are telling us. Whether they're true or not is obviously down to your discretion. But that is the rumour that uh, the player I'll be looking at today, uh, he has his agent in London to have talks with Arsenal about a possible signing. But before I do go into that, uh, another player that we were looking at, Dominic Jobosly. If you want to learn more about him, go check out yesterday's video uh, on the Hungarian midfielder. Very, very talented player. And I'm very, very happy he's been linked to us. So please go check out that video and find out some more about the Hungarian. But if you're enjoying the series, please like like and subscribe and leave a comment in the uh, comment sections below and let us know what you think of the series, what you think of the players we've been linked to. Are you frustrated that the business has been going on or are you more understanding about the current situation? Please do leave those comments because the positivity out of them has been fantastic as always. But let's get straight into today's video and talk about the guy that we're going to be looking at and it is Torino's Izzo. Now, Izzo is a really interesting player to be looking at because at the start of the summer, I was looking around at players possibly that we could look at to sign at centre-back, seeing who'd had the best season in their respective league. And Izzo kept coming up as this player in Serie A who, to be honest, before the season started, I'd never really heard of. His name kept creeping up uh, in certain reports and articles that I was reading throughout the season that he was having a really fantastic time uh, for Torino and for good reason. And after doing a little bit more research for this video is certainly uh, very clear as to why he's so highly rated. So highly rated, so he was actually put into uh, whoscored.com's uh, team of the season uh, along the side of Van Dyke at centre-back. If there's any more higher praise than that, uh, I mean, I don't know where you're going to get it from because being selected to be put next to Van Dyke in the team of the season, for me, is the highest possible praise for a centre-back right now. And that's where he was put, and for good reason. And if we go into talking about him as a player, you'll soon understand why. So Izzo, he's a six-foot player. His history uh, is basically all situated in Italy. He's never really moved out of it. He started off at Napoli uh, before taking a step down after a, couple, uh, after a loan deal, uh, and he went down to Avellino uh, before then moving to Genoa. Uh, where he basically, that's, that was where he made his name, was at Genoa for a few seasons, before then signing for around 9 million euros, uh, started last season for his current team being Torino. And the 9 million euros now, if you think that's what he signed for after a good few seasons with Genoa, to what the fee could be rising to now, with just one season done from his contract, with four years left supposedly on this deal, I can imagine that any fee for him would be quite sizable. Why would you let a player go... Uh, if he's still got four years left on his contract, I don't know. It seems very Arsenal. I'm not sure how Torino are with their deals, but I'm pretty sure they want to get as much money for one of their star players as they possibly can. He got four goals uh, and one assist during the season. The four goals, as you can see from the screen, were scored completely in their entirety from set pieces, from corners, from free kicks, lofted into the box, and he uses his height well. We'll come on to talk about his aerial duels a little bit later on, but it's definitely a guy who's a threat in the box. He's definitely getting in there and trying to get his head onto shots. His reaction, his reactions are very good. You can see from one of the goals there where he reacts to a loose ball and gets on the end of it and puts it in. And he's definitely a guy that when you need reactions in the, in the other end of the pitch, he's got those reactionary skills uh, in his own half to complete some of the fantastic duels that he got involved into last season. Moving forward then and talking about his specific position, it's very obvious that he is a centre-back and it's a centre-back that plays in the back three at Torino. Uh, and he, he plays across it. He's, the heat map shows you that he actually leans more to the right-hand side and that is because he's, he's a right-footed player. And so being a right-footed player, he does lean more to that side. But he has been situated on the left uh, a couple of times uh, by the Torino management, but still leaning towards that right. But he's been trusted, basically, to be the marshal, the main guy in that Torino back line to really show them the experience and the quality he has. And, uh, and he does that really well. The intensity of the heat map that you saw shows that he moves about a lot. He's not just someone who sits on his laurels and waits. He knows to move forward. He knows to come back. He definitely uh, has leadership skills in that back line to move around the pitch and also step out of line when he needs to, to go into step a pass, go challenge an opponent or whatever he needs to do. He is on it as a player. And so 
that to bring that into Arsenal alongside the likes of Socrates, we'd have two really experienced heads at the back. And it's a centre-back signing that I think a lot of people would have been really pleased about because we've been linked with the likes of Saliba uh, and other young players that could have been coming in. But this guy, 27 years old, is an experienced, coming into the best years of his career. And we really thought that that was the type of signing that we would make at Arsenal going forwards to improve that back line. So please, in the comments, let me know, do you think this is the type of centre-back signing that you wanted to see? Or would you have rather seen us invest in more of a younger player to develop and prove that he can be one of the top players on the continent, like a possible Saliba signing might have been? Moving forward then, talking about the statistics and into his defending, his duels. He gets involved with a lot of challenges. 19.81 duels per game, 48 of those have been successful. You'd hope that might be a little bit higher, but it's a 50-50 ratio for the duels that he gets involved into. And he's really Really, really good at reading the game. He's good at timing his challenges. He times in. He doesn't bottle out of 50-50s, that's for sure. He really goes in for his challenges. And when he does, he's really, really good at getting the ball and timing his tackle to perfection to get the ball away from the opponent and keep the ball. Not just kick it old anywhere, but to get it into a position where he can then move forward and play a pass out from that point. He knows when to step up. He knows when to stay in line. He knows when to time his challenge and jockey opponents. And he does that to great effect. And when he's talking about his aerial duels, we talked about his height of his set piece and his threats. 4.79 area joules per game, 65.8% success rate, a really high area joule success rate. And we need that. We need our set pieces being a little bit more solidified. We know that uh, our Juan Carlos, our obviously assistant manager, uh, dictates how we play from set pieces, both in an attacking sense and a defensive sense. And Izzo is a type of player who's going to be up there getting his head onto the balls. And with the likes of Socrates, you've got two players really key at winning aerial balls and making sure any danger is dealt with by the pair and I think those two as a partnership could work really well for many many reasons uh, in terms of inter interceptions 6.27 per game and this was the statistic that really highlighted his strength he got uh, 87 interceptions last season which was the highest amount of uh, interceptions by any Serie A defender uh, across the whole of the season so seeing that type of uh, reading of the game and positional awareness and spatial awareness in a player like Izzo we need to bring that into our team to get the ball back to hit the teams on the counter and by intercepting balls that is the best possible way to do that his losses still is, is up and down we'll talk about the comparisons in a second but 8.97 losses per game with a 40 43 percent of those being in his own half you'd expect them to be in his own half because he is a center back let's not forget so any losses he is making but it is quite a lot. Maybe it's down to the fact he's playing at one of the more mid-table teams in Torino uh, that are quite a yo-yo side within Serie A. Pushed for that Europa League sometimes, but can be down the other end of the table as well. And it might be down to the fact that he's at Torino, maybe, maybe not. But he still has that amount of losses that are going on which need to improve. But that is less than what Mustafi did last season. Mustafi was 9.35 losses, uh, but much higher than Socrates. Socrates only lost the ball 5.7 times uh, during each match. So he's, he's sort of a halfway point between the two, slightly leaning towards Mustafi's end of the losses. But I think all the other areas of his game and his jewels and his aerial jewels and interceptions certainly make up for that aspect of his game. And it's something that definitely can be improved during coaching, which I'm sure it could be. Uh, recoveries, recoveries, talking about recoveries there, 13.83 uh, recoveries made per game, 29% uh, of those being done uh, in the opposition half, which is positive. Again, he's, he's moving forwards, he's, he's marshalling that line and pushing the team up to halfway and then timing his interceptions and his, his recoveries right so that he can get the ball in the opposition half and turn things around. You don't expect it to be too much higher uh, for a centre-back because they spend so much time in their own half. But the fact he's doing that still, over 25% of those in the opposition half is positive as well. Um, talking about his passing and his long passing, uh, 44 passes per game, 85% success rate is, is strong for a centre-back. Uh, long passing, 8.89, as we talked about, modern centre-backs need to be able to spray the ball wide and left and find play in opposition's halves that are going to spring in behind. He does do that. He finds passes in behind, which is really strong, with a 65% success rate of Lazon passing, which is excellent. Uh, crosses, not really part of his game. Uh, less than one cross per game, nearly one in two uh, are made, and only a 25% success rate. Not really a part of Izzo's game, as you'd expect for someone who plays a, a, usually in the middle of a back three. Uh, dribbles, he's not the type of defender that's going to bring the ball out all too often. 0 0.9 dribbles per game, so just under one being done, but an 86% success rate in those dribbles. So when he does, usually it does come off, but he's not the type that you see taking the ball out of defence. He's not like a Saliba. He's not like a, a Beerlick, if he were to play in that position instead of the normal 
more natural CDM. He's not going to be taking the ball out. So don't expect to see that. But overall, I think he's a really positive player to be linked to. If it is true that we are indeed in talks and this uh, this agent that's come to London is in talks with Arsenal, I think there's a really high chance of, of sealing a deal for a, a player who's extremely talented, who needs to step up from the current level that he's at and can bring a lot of quality into the side. There's errors in his game that need to be ironed out for sure, but the positives are much more weighted in his favour than the negatives are. And he's certainly someone that maybe we could be looking at to bring in and improve the squad overall. So in terms of alternatives, I'd like to give you guys some alternatives and the players that we've looked at previously. Uh, the first one is obviously someone I've mentioned, uh, William Salaba, the 18-year-old, the 19-year-old um, Saint-Etienne centre-back. And uh, the, the, it's gone a bit quiet on Salaba. Supposedly, we were supposed to make a bid. Nothing has supposedly gone in so far. A bid was meant to be made, but we've heard nothing more. Maybe we're calling interest on him, or maybe uh, if we are signing him, he will definitely be going back on loan to San Tessino, and so we need to bring extra enforcements in. H hence, obviously, the links to Izzo. Uh, Mario Hamoso was the other one we looked at. You can go check out the show I did on him, but he's most likely leaving to go to someone else. He's rejected a new contract to Espanyol now, and it's likely that he could move to Atletico Madrid with Godin obviously already left to go to Inter Milan and finally is Joachim Anderson you can check out the show I did on Joachim Anderson and Dennis Pratt as well uh, and Anderson has also said that he is now willing uh, to admit that he thinks he's going to be pushing on to bigger things after Sampdoria this summer so hopefully maybe we'll see him moving to, possibly to Arsenal who knows but I think I'm leaning towards Izzo as my uh, favourite certainly my, my prime target as a centre-back to come in and improve the side Saliba probably being second but just because of the age thing, I'd love to bring him in because I think he's a brilliant prospect. But Izzo is established, he's, he's needed, we need this type of experience. And so he's the one I probably would go for of the centre-back options we've been linked to. I hope you've enjoyed the video, people. If you have, please give it a like, please subscribe. If you're new with those notifications turned on so you never miss one of our tactical breakdowns. We'll see you again very, very soon. And as always, up the Arsenal.